Welcome everyone to the new Fly Fisher. On today's show, we'll talk about the freshwater wolf, the pike. We'll discuss the equipment, the flies, and fishing the structure you need to target in order to be successful. It's going to be another great one, so don't go away. This week, the new Fly Fisher crew is going to try one of the more than 4,000 lakes that are in the Elliott Lake area. Listen as Brad Parsons, Assistant Economic Developer for the City of Elliott Lake, gives us a brief history of the area. Uh, Elliott Lake was, was born about uh, 55 years ago, back in the 50s, after a huge ore body of uranium was found in the area and mining began. Uh, the town seen its boom and bust uh, over the years, of course, uh, reaching populations close to 30,000 at times. And of course in 1992 with the collapse of uh, all the mines actually uh, with uh, less demand for the uranium and uh, we, we saw the loss of 4,000 jobs and unfortunately uh, the out migration of all of our miners so uh, thankfully we've survived uh, through a lot of uh, good decisions and retirement living project and uh, here we are today. The pike is a very effective predator and lives primarily on the flesh of other fish. This said the pike is not adverse to eating the occasional frog or small amphibian or its own species. Completely motionless and quite invisible in its normal habitat, it lies in wait beneath a water plant or alongside a submerged tree stump for a likely meal to stumble into its area. Northern pike are spring spawners and spawning takes place immediately after the ice melts and when water temperatures reach 40 to 50 degrees Fahrenheit. In general, the species spawns during the daylight hours on heavily vegetated floodplains of rivers, marshes, and bays of larger lakes. The first setup that is being used today is a full sinking line with about three feet of monofilament leader attached to it. Attached to this leader is 8 inches of coated wire bite tippet and then the fly. The second setup that is used today is a clear intermediate line with 4 feet of 40 pound fluorocarbon tippet and attached to that is the fly. Pike identify an approach of its prey by the use of its senses of sight and smell combined with its lateral line and the receptor pores in its head. This will alert it to the direction and the speed of the approaching prey. <laughs> that feels like a lake trout or a big, big jack, I'll tell you. And he's angry. He's not happy. He's got so much fight in him. These northern pike in the cold water are so strong, they just don't want to come in. Look at that. He's Four runs there. I think we got him tired out now. Should I put him in the net? Yeah. Come over here. Nothing like this. But he did. There we go. One nice fresh northern pike. They went. Okay. Okay. There we go. There he goes. Some tools you should have when you're a pike fishing are a protective glove, 
a set of jaw spreaders, a heavy duty set of pliers, and when possible, a boca grip. The rods needed for pike fishing should be stout. They should be in the nine foot area and in the eight to nine weight class. This is needed for casting large and wind resistant flies and for the sheer power of these fish. Large arbor reels are best as they allow you to pick up line faster. A smooth drag is needed to tire out the pike as soon as possible. When the pike is alerted to a potential prey, it will position itself for an ambush. And only when the unwary bait enters its field of attack, the pike will lunge forward. Relying on its sight and with lightning propulsion, the pike rarely misses its target. However, if the attack proves unsuccessful, the pike will not pursue its prey. It simply returns to its post and will wait for a new opportunity. They're nice on a fly rod. I can really feel these pike. Much better than spinning. Oh. Once hooked, your pike will do everything in its power to shed the hook, and quite often they succeed. Many people believe that a pike is incredibly hardy but in fact, they will go belly up very fast if not handled correctly. Once beaten, action is needed to avoid stressing the fish and inflicting any extra injury on the fish. When unhooking a pike, remember two golden rules. Never turn away from the pike for even a second and keep your hands behind the jaws at all times. This will keep you safe. Look at that, fifth run. The Elliott Lake area provides other species of fish also. One of the largest species is the lake trout. Other species in the area are speckled trout, splake, rainbow trout, smallmouth bass, and walleye. Lakes like Dunlop and Quirk support lake trout, walleye, and smallmouth bass in abundance. Lake trout in the 20 pound range, walleye in the 12 pound range, and smallmouth bass up to seven pounds have been caught in the area. Brook trout as big as nine pounds have been caught and pike weighing over 10 pounds are common. Hammer that leech. Oh, that's 10, 12 pound fish. Won't be bottom. Looks like a shark, he said. Well, so you're, fish, let, you're letting the rod and the reel do all the work. Yeah. Well, these fish fight really differently than uh, the pike. They uh, they cruise back and forth and back and forth, and then they try to go really deep. Took a big black leech, right? Big black leech with a stinger hook on it. Big black leech. Well, 10, 12, 10 or 12 pound lake trout, I'd say, Norm. Okay, you gonna net him? He's ready.
still happy to roll with it. It's still got juice in it. I'm glad we tied these up last night. <laughs> and they work. And he doesn't want to come in yet, you know. He's got, he feels like he's got a reserve of power, eh? Like he could just play with me for a while, but I should try to get him out. Okay. I know, I know. It's a big fish. Yeah. He's not tired yet. He's got power. I'm having trouble with it. No, no. This fish. This fish. Cover. Flies for pike are generally minnow imitations such as deceivers and clouser minnows. Leeches are also effective along with woolly buggers. There's a saying, the bigger the fly, the bigger the fish. Here's a tying recipe for the fly of choice today, the deceiver. The hook is a Mustad S71S in sizes 3-aught through number 6. The thread is white, 6-aught or 3-aught. The tail, 6 to 8 neck or saddle hackles mixed with complementary colors of crystal flash. The body, which is optional, is pearl or silver poly braid. The wing, bucktail, tied in two clumps along the sides of the hook. The top wing, bucktail. Topping, which is optional, is peacock pearl. The throat, red crystal flash or flashaboo, and the eyes are prism tape eyes. Eight inches long, got two hooks. And we were just going by the point there, out in deep water. As soon as I hooked this guy, he went right out here to the center, deep water, which it told me it was a lake trip. He just took a run, took me into my back. He grabbed the tail. And it had a lot of short strikes on my white zonkers that didn't have a tail. And this is what did it. Probably about seven pounds, maybe eight. I don't want to handle this guy. I don't want to hurt him. So, gently bring him in. took big long black leech about eight inches long stinger hook here is what he grabbed I got lead at the top to help it get down listen as Ontario top guide Ken Collins instructs us on the proper retrieve needed wet reels especially when you start seeing the type of retrieve and the way we're gonna fish these folks so you end up soaking everything get the whole reel hole everything wet make sure that the line is soaked right through Okay, and your hands are soaked. Very important, because otherwise Bill's gonna get hurt hands. Now, what I wanna show you about this fly that makes the whole difference in what catches fish is that's great sunlight over there, so I'm gonna just do a demonstration of the action. The action is paramount. We want to get the serpentine S motion. So watch how we get that. See if you can see that, whoa, we're sinking too fast. All right, let's see if I can do it right here. Come in right here. Yeah, I don't know if I can do it. Really good. I don't know if I can get, there's a little bit of the S. It doesn't show up as well unless you come across current though. So let's try this. See that little serpentine? See how it pauses and just, and does that wicked little arc? Mm -hmm. That is key. That arc where it pauses is where they're gonna slam it. And so how we get that action, Bill, is we put it out over there 
and we strip real hard and then pause. Real hard and then pause. Real hard and then pause. Okay. Real hard and then pause. But keep your line right at it. Right at the number it. one mistake that everybody is going to make with this is when they hit it, it's just going to see this toilet ball flush. It's going to be four feet wide. Yeah. You might see the attack coming, most of the time you won't. You don't, yeah. So it's just going to be boom, the sky, the water's just going to open up. All right. Now let's join Phil Rowley as he battles a massive northern pike. Holy, I've got a really nice pike on here and I'd like to say it was from a unique presentation and all thought out. I was actually changed flies to this big articulated mole which stands for mother of all leeches. It's a, actually a steelhead pattern, a West Coast steelhead pattern. It's tied on a Dacron core and I was just rabbit strip body and I was just dabbling the fly in the shallows to get it wet before casting and I did it once twice and the second time in water less than knee deep this big pike just came out of nowhere and annihilated the fly it scared the living tar out of me <laughs> and it's a good pike we should put a scale on this and see how much it weighs get that Show people how to net big, way big fish. There we go. Holy smokes. That fish was in water this deep, five feet from the bank. So you don't have to cast far here to catch fish. Well, there's our fly here. It's just a, it's tied on the, the front section here is the shank, and this is all just cross-cut rabbit tied onto um, braided uh, specter braid and a little tiny up eye octopus hook so you get the advantage of a big fly but not the disadvantage of a long shank which a fish can lever to its advantage and throw out plus it makes it hard to throw and once this is hooked fish has nothing to fight or lever against so it's a very effective pattern not only for steelhead where it was designed but big northerns and brookies like we have here and big flies big fish What a magnificent fish. And that fish was sitting in about 12 inches of water. Just came up and ate the leech as I was preparing it to cast, getting it wet so it would sink right away. Listen as Ken Collins shows us the proper casting technique for large flies. I call it the flop. Yeah. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna have your amount of line out on this sink tip that we want. Mm -hmm. wherever it's capable of and you're always going to strip to the knot did you hear that yeah hear that yeah. you're going to strip to that knot with this rig okay and at that point normally it would be out here okay we're just going to roll it over flop and then descend it you don't even need to haul good okay okay and then it's out and then you're just going to do the stripping gig into your bay into your bay the little basket up here strip strip mm -hmm. strip 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 we'll talk about as we're going mm -hmm. and some of the objectives and you can see how sometimes I can add a little elbow dug yeah. here same way as I and that'll also help get a bigger S going mm -hmm. so again you're done to the knot flop pinch it off and just throw it I want that arc to be so pronounced so what I'm doing is I'm taking a fairly good size split shot and putting it on the nose of this tube fly okay and what that's going to do is it's just going to give it one more step of jigging action that we're just going to like okay go, yeah. all right so we're going to go back to that hook set so what will happen when the fish comes up it's going to just totally take that whole fly and it's going to disappear and when it does what we need to do is we need to not lift the rod big mistake doing a regular hook set like you do for trout or some other species over game's over right away so what you got to do is you got to keep stripping bill until you actually feel the weight of that fish. So it's important to feel the weight oh, first yeah. before you do anything. Absolutely. So now you see the fish, it can excite you. You don't want to be too premature. You want to wait till you feel it. That's right. Okay. Once you feel that weight, I want you to strip even a little more. Okay. And when you, you strip, and all of a sudden you just can't go anymore. It's, it's just taunt. Like you're stuck. Oh, and your rod tip's going to stay right there, right down in the water. Right. And all of a sudden everything's just going to be rock and roll loaded. Okay. And then at that point, you're just going to go because he's going to turn. At that point where he feels that much pressure on his mouth, he's going to turn. Right. And when he turns, we go crank with a side hook set. It's a side hook. It's yeah. a sweeping side. Sweeping side Not set. Up. Yeah. We don't want up. Boom. And what that does is it slides the hook out of the front palate of the mouth. 
into the lock into the corner where the meat's good. Oh, that's what and that doing. holds on to them real good. good. That's a good right. This, that hook this. is awesome. You want to do that again? <laughs> Everybody likes that part. They want me to do it with a real hook though. <laughs> so yeah. So what happens is the fish clamps down, and the hook's just sitting on the mouthy parts on the top palate, which is all teeth. Hopefully we get to show you that. And what we want is that hook to slide back. Mm and get into there. So that's why it's important to slide set. And that. This, this is a typical saltwater set. Agreed. So if you learn this, you, you oh. can go down and fish a saltwater. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh yeah. He's gonna dance, he's gonna dance. That's your northern. It's a northern, I was gonna say, it's a pike. Northern. It's a pike. Well, it's in the same family. <laughs> oh, he definitely committed himself. Let the swing, guys. I'm getting you some good sunlight, I hope. But I can't drop anchor till I get here. No, he's he's definitely hooked, though. Yeah. Oh, he's only on the tongue. But you got him. I got him. Oh yeah. Now. It's a northern. Look at that. Son of a gun. You got him, buddy. There's what Ontario has. Oh, they're nice. Fly caught pike. We were actually after a muskie, but that's okay. Great fight. Great oh. fight. <laughs> I'm all wet. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Just letting them get some water and some oxygen. He gave us a tussle there. He's had some a lot more hook pressure than that. Uh, There he goes. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> a bonus when you're when you're smallmouth fishing, there is pike and muskie around. Huh. Well, I'm gonna try that again. Now we had a muskie first take a swipe at it and he missed. And as we began to bring the fly back, a pike came and took it. So anything can happen. This is great. This is wonderful. <laughs> oh wow. And again, overhanging trees and banks. If you can camera will get a shot of that. This is where we're taking them, and I'm casting as close as I can to the bank. For more information on this show and others in our series, visit us on the web at thenewflyfisher.com. From all of us here at The New Fly Fisher, thanks for joining us, tight lines, and we'll see you next week.